Okay, today we're going to start our introduction of animals and go over and bring back some of the things that we've already learned, kind of bring them to the forefront of our mind of what we know about living things and then apply them especially to animals. Then we'll add a few more things about animal body plans and then in the weeks to come we'll jump off and use all of that information on how we describe and classify animals. The first thing you have to know and remember is that animals are multicellular, which means they're made up of more than one cell. And the animals that we're going to look at are going to be uh, made up of thousands and trillions of cells, just like we are. The second thing that you need to remember about animals and all living things is that animals have to complete functions. Um, functions are things that um, are tasks or um, life characteristics. So some of those functions would um, first obtain food. They have to find nourishment and they have to find fuel or just like a car, if they run out of gas, they will cease to live. Next thing is they have to get oxygen and that's an obvious situation. They have to have oxygen to breathe. If they're not breathing, then they're going to die as well. Next, they have to have homeostasis. Remember that homeostasis is the body's ability to maintain stable internal conditions, like maintaining a certain body temperature. And if your body reaches a temperature that's above or below that homeostasis set temperature, then it's going to respond in certain ways, like um, shivering or um, other things. Also, the homeostasis would be like um, maintaining your food, your need for food. So it'll send you um, like cravings or make your stomach growl or those kinds of things. You also have to be able to move. Remember that um, in even sessile animals and sessile being animals that stay in one place, they still move their bodies. They, they just don't change locations. Most of the animals that we study are going to change locations too. So in being able to move does several things. One, they're able to go and get their food. Um, two, they can flee from a predator that's chasing them so that they're not just stuck sitting there and just, you know, like, hey, come eat me. I'm a snack. Also, being able to move is to be able to change your whole environment. Like if your location runs out of food and water or becomes too crowded and overpopulated, the animal can then move to find more ideal situation. Also remember you have to reproduce. Reproduction is vital or um, that species will die out if, if all that species stops reproducing. So the next thing we want to talk about as far as animals is that they have adaptations. And we've talked about adaptations before. Remember the definition is structures and behaviors that allow animals to go through life, such as like a kangaroo's pouch. That pouch enables them to continue letting their babies form and grow while they're able to still go out and find food can, and complete all of their different life functions. Um, think for a second, and I'll give you just a minute, and I'll pause here, what some other adaptations could be. We talked about um, the adaptations of the finches on the Galapagos Islands when we were talking about Darwin's finches. And remember that their beaks over time adapted to their food source that became further and further down. So their beaks elongated. We also talked about um, the giraffe. Remember the giraffe's neck over time elongated and became became longer because its food source kept getting higher and higher. And so adaptations are changes that happen over generally longer periods of time. But there are things that change on that animal that help them survive. All right, so one of the things that we need to really talk about is going to be the animal body plans or the way their bodies are designed. And they have different types of designs based on their um, needs and, and their environment that they live in. 
So remember, this is remember this should be a review. This should not be something that's like a new aha moment for you. Animals' bodies are organized, um, and we go from small to big. We know that first you have the cells. Then you get cells that work together and they form tissue. And tissue are cells that work together to do um, some sort of a function. When you get a lot of tissue together, that then makes an organ, and an organ works to um, complete a task that the tissue couldn't do by itself. So once you have tissues, similar tissues working together, they make this organ that then can do a bigger function. Then you get several organs working together and they make a body system and, or you could say a um, organ system. It's also called that. So an organ system or a body system is going to complete a full task for that body, a necessary vital task for that body, like the respiratory system. It's going to process air. It's going to bring in oxygen. It's going to take the oxygen to the cells. It's going to grab the carbon dioxide, take it back to the lungs, and throw that carbon dioxide out. If that body system doesn't do that, then the organism dies. And so you finally reach the organization of the entire organism, and that organism is made up of many body systems working in tandem. And remember the word tandem means together. So these body systems work together or in tandem to keep this organism alive. And then here's that diagram um, that we've talked about. And we've talked about how you can even go smaller than just a cell. Um, we talk about when you go smaller than a cell, that becomes a different study of science. That becomes a physical science. We start talking about molecules and atoms and subatomic particles that would even be up here, like neutrons, electrons, and protons that make the atom. The atom makes the molecules. Molecules make the cell and so forth. Like I said, this should not be new information. This should be something you already know. We're just revisiting that.